Hey everyone, so just last month I did this video about Google Earth Studio. This is a really cool program that allows you to create these beautiful map animations utilizing all of Google's 3D and satellite imagery. If you haven't already seen the video, you can check it out right here. Now the big problem with Earth Studio right now is the fact that you can only use it on non-commercial projects. So it's kind of useless for a lot of people, even though you can do some pretty amazing stuff with it. So that's why today I wanted to review this plugin called GeoLayers 2. Now GeoLayers 2 allows you to do a lot of the same things that you can do with Google Earth Studio, the difference being that you can use it on commercial projects. Now this is a premium plugin for Adobe After Effects, so everything you do is inside of Adobe After Effects. Now this plugin has a ton of features, a ton of customization options, I'm only going to be really scratching the surface here. I'm going to take you through a quick project, we're going to animate a little map, add a route, add some labels, do some you know basic animations, and at the end I'll give you a little sneak peek and show you some really powerful stuff that you can do with it. Now I really urge you to go and download the trial version of this plugin. If you want to, just follow my affiliate link down in the video description. That way you'll be able to play around with the plugin and follow along with me in the tutorial. All right, I'm inside of Adobe After Effects. And once again, if you want to follow along, just go to the link in the description of this video and you can download a trial version of this. Now, once you've got it installed, go to Window Extensions and select GeoLayers 2 and then your panel will come up here. So this is the panel. At the top, we have a Create a New Project button. And then there are just a ton of different templates here with really, really cool looks. And they have different kinds of templates. You can do like label templates, showcase templates, different stuff. But we're gonna start from scratch here. So I'm gonna click on create new project. Uh, first I'm gonna name this, we'll call it Iceland. Uh, let's just call it Ring Road. Now I can adjust the composition settings right here. Let's say we want it to be five seconds in length. The rest of this stuff is fine. Now here we have server profile. So GeoLayers 2 works by accessing online map imagery. It comes with 14 different server profiles, each representing a certain map style. Now, each one can be used for free, but you must provide proper attribution. You can also create and customize your own server profiles if you want, but I'm gonna save that for a more advanced tutorial. And all these defaults are okay. This is just kind of uh, the quality of these tiles and how they're gonna be handled. I'm gonna click Create. All right, now that our project is created, we see an entirely new interface here inside of this panel. And down here we have a couple of new layers. First we have our map comp, and if I open this up, we can see here are all of our tiles. So these are really the building blocks of our map. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that. We also have two other layers here. This is the attribution information which is automatically added from our server profile. So if I zoom in, you can see this is a Bing Arial server profile. So it gives us that Bing logo. So we don't have to worry about adding the attribution. It's automatically added. We can just reposition it to wherever we want. But I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off for right now for the purposes of the tutorial. Now, how can we navigate our map? Well, it's not like Google Earth where we can simply click and drag and move it around. It's a little bit different. So over here, we have some navigation tools. We have zoom in, zoom out. We have a fit to comp button. And then we have some scrolling buttons here. I can scroll north, scroll south, and scroll east and west. And I can also add keyframes. So if I go over here and I add some keyframes, and then I move my playhead and then hit fit to comp, now I have my first animation here. So what exactly is it animating? Well, if I go to my map comp layer and I hit the U key, it's gonna show us some keyframes here. So here we have some attributes and that's the latitude, the longitude, and the zoom. If we go to Effect Controls panel. Now, we can also make movements and adjustments here as well. So we zoom this back in. But this is not the most efficient way. We wanna, we wanna be more precise. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and undo all of this. Just delete all these and then fit to comp. Now we're gonna animate and add some graphics to Iceland. So, to find Iceland, I'm gonna go over to this search online toolbar here, and I'm gonna type in Iceland. Now this is automatically searching our uh, map profile here online. Now it gives us our results, and there's a couple of different buttons here. These are different actions you can do. You can kind of immediately fit that area to the screen, so that automatically zooms that in. We can add some labels, we can draw features, and we can add it to favorites, or we can download it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this star button. Now that added, adds my feature down here. Now think of this kind of like a project panel. We can add a bunch of different locations and features here, and then once we select them here, that gives us all of these different actions here, 
which we can do, which as you can see, some of these are the same that we had in our shortcuts up here. Now, the search online tool is actually pretty amazing. You can use it to find a bunch of different features. You can, you can find rivers, lakes, you can highlight kind of any point of interest you want, even down to specific buildings. So now what I wanna do is I'm just gonna type in three different cities. Let's type in Reykjavik, uh, the capital. Okay, how do, we, how do you spell that? Oh, I was right, okay. <laughs> So here's Reykjavik. So let's go ahead and just favorite that. And I'm going to type in another city called Hof. I don't know. Uh, it's showing us Germany right now, but we want Iceland. So I'm going to type in Hof Iceland. There we go. I'm going to favorite that. And then the last one is a northern city called Akuyeri, something like that. There we go. That's what I want. Okay. Okay. So I've got my city selected here. Now let's start to add some cool elements to our map. So I'm going to zoom in here so we can see what we got going on. First, let me add some labels to the map. So I'm going to grab, uh, let's just grab one of the cities here. Let's grab Reykjavik. I'm going to grab the feature here. And if I go down here, there's a little label button. And it says snap label to feature. So obviously, I want when I click this, it's going to snap a label to whatever I have selected here. So if I click that, it's going to automatically add this label to my map. And if we look down here, there is a comp called label. And it pasted kind of right where my playhead was. And that's because it has this nice animated intro. So check that out. So it'll paste right there on the playhead. And then it'll jump your playhead right to the end of the intro of the animation. Pretty cool feature. So now I'm going to just bring that to the beginning. So it's very cool. It comes with that, um, that animation already on there. If I select this and go to Effect Controls, you're going to see there's more customization options here. Like if when I scale the map, I can have it scale with the map or I can just have it stay the same size. You can also change some of the stylization options. With this layer selected, I can go over here and there's a drop down menu and there's a couple of different options here. If I want to change the, um, the location of it, let's say I want it to go to the left, I can select to the left. It hasn't changed yet. I have to press this swap button and then there it's updated. And we can also change that to a couple of different we can make it a locator if we want, change that. Or we could change it to this region. Let's see what that looks like. That's pretty cool. Region two, swap that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go with that one. Now I'm gonna grab the other city here. Okay, so that's where that city is located is. And this city here. Okay, so now I've got these three labels for my cities here. Now let's create our little road trip. So I basically want to create a route that goes around Iceland's ring road, which is essentially the route one, which kind of does a big loop here. Now I want that to animate on and follow that route. So first I need to create the route. So to do that, I'm going to go over here to my little browser and I'm going to select all the cities. So first it'll be Reykjavik and it'll go down to here. So I'm going to select all of these and go up to this little button here. It says add route. I'm going to click that, and this is just so, so cool, the customization options here. So I have the three cities, and I can select how I want the route to go. By bicycle, by foot, by plane, I can create a simple straight line, but I want it to loop all the way around. So I don't want it to end here, so I'm going to add another waypoint. I'm going to just copy this and paste it here. And now, I'm going to hit Add Route to Browser. And here it has a route, but there's a little drop down menu here. And here it's showing us all the things that it that it created here. So these are essentially paths here, and it's showing us the mileage, the distance. If we open up each one, it's showing us all the waypoints. Very, very cool. So we could create features out of that. But all I want to do is basically draw a feature based on these paths. So I'm going to select each path. Now I have all of these three features selected. And over here, there's a little pencil tool. I'm going to go ahead and click this. It says Draw Selected Feature. So I'm going to click that after a little bit of buffering here. Now we see we have our path created. It created a shape layer down here. Now I'm not really liking this white, so I'm going to click the layer here. And I'm going to go up here, and we can change the style. And there's a couple of different options here. We have strokes, fills, dashes. Let's let's see what uh, let's go with like a pink and see if it brings down the. I have to hit swap. Okay, now I can actually change the color of that as well. So let me select this. And if you go up here and look, there's a stroke option. I can click on that, and let's maybe change it to the same color as this blue here. 
Okay, so our map's looking pretty cool, but we want to bring this route to life. We want to make it, you know, give it some movement. Now, there's a couple of different things we could do, but I'm going to show you two in particular that I kind of like. Now, first, I'm going to go over, grab the ellipse tool. I'm going to create a little ellipse. Well, there's a fill of white and then a stroke. Let's bring that stroke down to like 10 maybe. And then I'm going to create a little circle here. And we'll rename this marker. We don't have to rename it marker. We can rename it whatever we want. And I'm going to bring the playhead to the beginning because this is an animation and I want it to start here. Now I'm going to go over to this little marker button and it says snap selected layer to feature. And if I click and hold on that, it'll say animate along feature. So I'm going to select that and now these are both checked and there's an orient along path. I want to make sure it actually doesn't matter that that's checked because I'm using an ellipse. So essentially we're going to be snapping this graphic to a specific feature that we have once we click this. So we want to snap it to the path. So I'm going to select these paths. I'm holding the command option to select all these. We don't want to select the main one, just these three paths. And we have three different paths. One is here, the next is here, and the third is here. So I'm going to go to the beginning here. And with all those selected, I'm going to click that button. And now that should automatically put it to there and there it is. Now if we play this back, you can see we have our little marker moving along our route. Super, super cool. Now another thing that we could do, and I, obviously when these reach the specific city, I could have those animate on just by moving them. Boom. And I could bring this one under. So like I said, the customization options here are just Totally crazy. And then we could obviously move this marker underneath our labels so it goes under. So that's one option. Another option could be to add a trim path. So let's just turn off that marker and let's go to our path here, open it up, and open up contents. We can see our paths here. Now I'm going to go to add trim paths. I'm going to open up trim paths and watch what happens as I move this down to zero. So now I'm moving it. We can see that it's actually trimming all three. So we don't, we don't want to do them simultaneously. We want to do them individually. So now if I move this, let's just go ahead and keyframe this. We want it to be at 100 at the end and zero at the beginning. And now our path is moving along and the cities are popping up around the same time. Super cool. Okay, I want to show you one last cool thing. If you go up here, we can click on this edit map comp and I could actually change the server profile at any point during my project. So let's go down here and select this watercolor and apply it. That's going to give us a totally different look. Very, very cool. And now I could go here and do a quick animation on my map. I can grab my map comp, add some keyframes, go back and zoom out, add some more keyframes. And actually, I'm going to press U. Actually, let's say we want this zoom in to last the whole length of the comp, or the whole length of the timeline. So I'll go there. Easy ease those keyframes. Now the last thing you want to do is finalize. You see this little finalize button? You click that and that's going to finalize those map comps, uh, downloading all those tiles and giving you a more high res look there. So now we have our high res version and I can select OK. And now I can go ahead and export these out. Now as I said before, I'm really only scratching the surface here. The customization options of this plugin are quite vast. Basically, if you can think something up that you want to create, you can probably make it happen inside of GeoLayers 2. You can visualize data, you can easily import data sets using CSV and TSV files. You can extrude objects such as specific buildings or other graphic elements. And if you want to use it in conjunction with other plugins like Trapcode Mirror or Metal Freeform or Plexus, you can actually create crazy 3D landscapes. All right, so there you have it. Oh, wow, this is just so cool. I really love this plugin so much. I'm gonna be creating a bunch of additional tutorials and showing you some more features. So be sure to subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell. I'm probably gonna create like a GeoLayers 2 playlist and I'm also gonna be adding a lot of additional Google Earth Studio tutorials and I'm probably gonna be creating a Google Earth Studio playlist as well. If you know of any other plugins that do kind of the same thing or any other tools, 
please share them with me. I would love to review them or just take a look at them and compare because I always love um, tinkering around with maps inside of After Effects. It's probably my favorite thing to do. So if you like maps, if you like After Effects, subscribe to my channel. Oh, and one other thing, if you decide to buy this plugin, please use my affiliate link down in the video description. It would be much appreciated. And if you don't want to buy it, just download the trial version using the same link. It's, it's really, really cool. Play around with it. I'm telling you, working on one project with this plugin, you're going to get your money's worth. It's, it's so worth it.